the hoop. Pink ladies, T-Birds, just happen to be watchers of my shit. My name is Jimmy Pink, and this is Reveal Season 6, Episode 10 of RuPaul's Drag Race. And the look goes as follows. So the main challenge today is drag my wedding. So the goal was to dress up the grooms in drag as brides and the women be dressed as the mother of the bride. So I'm giving you a little bit of a drag style wedding even though this wig and this hat are not cooperating. I made this fucking hat out of cardboard by the way. I would just like to let that be known. That yes, I did. I was getting up. In, I was getting up in my costume and gig, y'all. Like I was filling my oats, making stuff for these episodes. I will warn you, I have no idea what the fuck I'm wearing for the fucking drag ball next week. But anywho, let's get up in this gig. So again, I'm so sorry to have to call bullshit on RuPaul's Drag Race yet again. But let me get my fan out because it's gonna be a little bit shady in this bitch. So, number one, okay, if you wanted to do a challenge in an episode that was all around marriage equality, I think that it's a fantastic idea. I think this is an excellent platform on it. This is the flagship show of the gay network. I would not expect anything less. However, like Jocelyn Fox's look last week, the execution was for shit. Like Jocelyn Fox's this week, the execution was poor. I hope y'all don't mind. The wedding is over. Mama done already took off her shoes. We at the reception now. I done had a couple drinks. The gloves got to go. I'm going to keep the hat on though because I don't feel like putting on sunglasses. And I made this bitch. For this motherfucker episode. And I'm kind of fucking feeling my fantasy. It ain't the best. We'll get better at that next time. So anywho. Um, let's get up in this gig. So the mini challenge. In honor of marriage equality. I'm going to do a collection of paintings. That I want y'all to twerk to fucking Geronimo. And do abstract paintings with your padded body. What? What does that have to do with marriage equality? Let's start. Let's let's start there. That was an excuse. That was a mini challenge that y'all came up with that y'all didn't know what episode y'all wanted to fucking stick it on. Okay. Y'all didn't know what episode y'all wanted to stick it on. So you stuck it on this one and made up a reason for it to be a thing. And really it was just an excuse to promote that damn song Geronimo, which by the way I did buy from iTunes. That's my shit. Um but, I digress, where does that have anything to do with marriage equality, is my question. Okay, um, number two, how do you pick a winner out of that? Seriously, gracefully and grandly, how the fuck did y'all find a winner for that shit? People twerking and smearing their body paint. There was nothing about it that said marriage equality was because it was different colors of paint. Well, shit. What else was you going to do? But I just, mm -mm, not feeling it. Bitch, don't kill my vibe. I was not feeling that at all. Um, the second part of why I said I felt like the execution was poor. So the main challenge, as I mentioned a little bit before when I was describing the look goes as follows. The main challenge was to have these married couples and you were dragging up the groom. Notice I said the groom, not one of the grooms. Rue is an ordained minister, so let's marry straight couples? Now, I realize that gay marriage is legal in every state now. I get that. Now, not then. However, what was just wrong with getting guys that were engaged 
and just dragging them up in bride's gear. Like, why did it have to actually be weddings so you got straight couples? So what I'm saying is, is like, you have this episode that's completely focused around marriage equality. But show nothing that had to do with marriage equality. Does that make sense? Does, does that make sense? Y'all 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 follow where I'm coming from with that? Like I, I I I just wasn't getting that. Okay. So let's get into the challenge, which was your drag mothers to these drag to your drag daughters, um, and what they want for their wedding. Now I know the last episode I was bitching, I'm a bitch about this one too. The rewatch quality of RuPaul's Drag Race, now knowing the shade and shit and the shady editing, knowing as much as we know, makes it a very hard rewatch. Because now I find myself doing something that I did not want to do on the channel, that I didn't want to do, period, because RuPaul's Drag Race is quite arguably my favorite television show. Um, I don't know another show that I watched from the beginning that I'm there right there, downloaded the logo app because, oh, uh-uh, if I ain't at work, I got to be able to watch it when it come on. I don't know another show for me that I do that. So it has to be my favorite show. And I'm finding it hard to re-watch because as shit is coming out in the wash, I'm re-watching shit now, able to pick up on that. So one major problem I had is this. You bring the girls out, you pick the girls, and then you find out who their grooms are. You have one black groom. You have no black drag queens. So therefore, you want somebody to paint this man who does not have anything resembling his skin tone. So I did have a little bit of problem with them talking about Jocelyn and how her person was painted. When Jocelyn is, she's not extremely pale, but compared to a black person, yeah, she is. Whose makeup was she supposed to borrow? Trinity's not there no more. Whose makeup was she supposed to borrow to get this together? To make it match her skin tone. And for that matter, has she ever done black makeup? She's not black. Okay? Um, number two. The thing about the drag makeovers... And traditionally, they're you they're usually making over gay men for whatever other. This challenge is always kind of a statement challenge. So you had like once it was like the older gays from like the Stonewall generation, like no know, know your roots, know your you know what we fought for for us to get to this point. We had the gays in the military because don't ask, don't tell was repealed. We know, so these episodes when they do the makeovers are usually a issue-based challenge. This is an issue-based challenge for people that are straight. I, 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 I don't understand. So with that, you had some problems. Now, for the most part, most of the guys were with it. Jocelyn's dudes, you can tell this is something that his fiance now wife, really wanted to do. He really wasn't into it as a professional athlete. And I understand we should all be accepting, but that is, we've seen what happened with Michael Sam, where he was one of the top defensive players in the country. He didn't get grabbed until sixth round, and then he got bounced from team to team until he's not even in the NFL at all, when he was one of the NFL's top prospects until he came out as gay. So that is a stigma that is still very much in place. And this is this man's career. This is this man's profession. And y'all want him to fight a fight that's not even his fight. He's straight. He's marrying a woman. He seemed very uncomfortable going in. Once he got on stage and people are saying like, oh, he threw up because they was reading him for filth. No, he threw up because when RuPaul asked him like, you know, how is this going to fix? That shit hit him all at once. And he like, holy shit, this is real. I'm about to be on national TV in fucking drag. And I got to go back to this locker room and ain't no telling what the fuck the rest of my life is going to be like with my career. Everybody is not open-minded, unfortunately. This is still something that 
we have this cheap ass pan. My shade pan fucking broke. Um, everybody's not ready for that. Keep in mind, this is season six. This is like four or five years ago. No, boo. Um, but I felt like for what Jocelyn had to work with, the adversity, she had somebody that really didn't want to do it. She didn't have the right color medication for him. Medication. The right color makeup for him. I feel like she didn't do horrible. However, as far as out of the girls that are left, she did do second to the worst. She should have been in the bottom she was. The other person I have issue with the critiques was Darian Lake. Because I know this editing, but RuPaul had this look on her face when she was making a black dress. First of all, if somebody is getting married and for a woman to give up her wedding day and her wedding dress to do this, and this particular guy was 100% gung-ho down for it. It was his idea, and he said, I want to go goth. I'm not making you something that you don't want to wear. He seemed to be thrilled that his wedding dress was going to be black. So that little turn up at the nose, I wasn't feeling. I also feel like Darian did a good job. What that man looked like and what that man came out looking like, that face was fucking beat. The dress was well fucking executed. And then they started reading her for filth about her outfit. Well, let me tell you something. And RuPaul should know better. You see, I ain't looking at my notes that much because this is some shit that I'm pressed about. Let's assume Darian is not a drag queen, but actual an actual woman of that size. Let's start there. Let's say this man is not a man in drag, but a real bride that had this goth wedding. A, you're not going to shine your daughter up. B, you big. And C, you don't know how much money or how much effort it took for her to get her daughter ready. So... I'm sorry, was that B, C, D, whatever letter of the alphabet I'm on. I have seen overweight women, big like Darian, wear this shit to a wedding. The mother of the bride, somebody that was an usher in the wedding. I've seen this. It was a sequin shirt, a sequin skirt, blousey, a little bit dressier than just having on like a blouse and a skirt. I didn't really see that much wrong with it. The counterpoint I'm going to make to that is Ben De La Creme, which I do think did a fantastic job. I didn't see as strong of a family resemblance as I wanted to, but the dress was executed well. However, what I've never seen is a mother of the bride have on what Ben De La Creme had on. Ben De La Creme had on... If there was a production in, let's say, Columbus, Ohio, Detroit, Michigan, a bigger city, but not New York or L.A., and they were doing a big stage production of Legally Blonde, the musical, and then there's that scene where Elle decides she's going to be her, so then she come up in the um, courtroom with like, her pink on and her blonde hair flowing, yada, 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 and now it's like, I can be a lawyer and be me. That's the outfit. That's the outfit the costume designer would have made. That looked like L. Woods in court. That does not look like the mother and bride. It also looks like 9 to 5. Like, it was a cute business suit. You might have would have wore that to church on Easter, but that didn't look like a mother and bride outfit. So if you're going to read Darian, you got to read Ben. This is the shit that I am starting to pick up on when y'all want certain people to go further than other people. I'm starting to pay attention to this. With that being said, Bianca obviously won this challenge. Obviously. She's a seamstress. She was able to execute herself a look. 
and the bride look very quickly. It did help that her and her groom, or her and her bride, were getting along very well in the room. He was very gung ho about it. Um, also, there was the family resemblance was there. Um, he put she put her bride in the traditional, even though she had a little bit of a different just updo. He had the very traditional um, Bianca hair. Um, and the trimming the dress in yellow, trimming just in yellow while she had on yellow was a very, very smart touch. Um, who else didn't I go over? Uh, oh, God. I went over Ben, Bianca, Courtney. Unpopular opinion, I didn't think Courtney's bride's dress was that bad. I think if the length would have been right, I think if that she would have did the under in a nude or a white and not that bright blue, and if she would have gotten this cinched a little bit better, I think she's top three. Also, the fact that she took the time to make herself look better but overall the idea of the dress I don't think was bad the execution was bad finally I'm gonna get into a door who finally got in the bottom like she deserved to be however I don't think she was the one that should have stayed I know it seems like I got a hate on for a door I don't I think a door is great at what a door does I think her personality is awesome. I would love to fucking party with the door. I would love to. I would love to see her live. And I like her look the way she does her look when she's not in competition and she does what she does. However, this look was fucking terrible. She did not look like the mother of anybody's bride, nor was she going to anybody's wedding, even a punk one, even a rock and roll one. Her makeup skills on somebody else, even for you to be a drag queen, like, I can do other people's makeup, but it's always going to, but my makeup on myself is always going to look better, even though I don't wear a lot of makeup on this channel, because this is usually covered, but... Unless you're a makeup artist or you're already somebody's drag mother, you're going to have a little bit of a problem putting on somebody else's makeup. Um, however, what she did do with makeup makes me question, do she even put on her own makeup? Because I'm like, you had to put that on somebody else. That looked like my 18-year-old niece who has used to watch me put on makeup since I can remember like two, three years old. The student has become the master. My niece is a fucking beast, y'all. I'm not even fucking joking. Even saying that, this looks like my niece putting on her makeup when she was six, playing in my stuff. I don't see you doing somebody else's makeup that fucking horrible. That, to me, sounded like, well, fuck it. I'm going to just try to get myself together at this point. Do you bang? Oh, something else I want to say when they were doing the vows. How cute was Darian's couple by throwing in all the RuPaul's Drag Race references into their vows? Like, they're clearly super fans of the show. Like I said, it was the groom's idea to get married on the show. Like, how fucking great were they? Like, I just love them as a fucking couple. Um, and apparently they've known each other for 35 years. Bang! But I, I, I was living for them. I was just living for them. And he looks fucking... He looked fucking sickening to me. Like, I thought that makeup and everything was on point. Like, he looked like a completely, totally different person. I think he looked the most like a girl out of everybody to me. But I digress. Um, so we get to this lip sync. And I'm sorry, I took my notes all kind of crooked this time. Okay. So this lip sync. I don't got the shade fan no more. So let me see if I got a lighter. I don't. So I'm going to try to stay calm. So, you have them lip syncing to Aretha Franklin. The Queen of Soul. 
the number one artist, the number one female artist, in, as far as rock and roll is concerned, in every motherfucking survey they've ever taken. Aretha will take your ass to church. Like Jocelyn was performing it. Adore was manic pixie girling all over the goddamn stage and she won. That shit pissed me off. When you are doing Aretha Franklin and you're lip syncing Aretha Franklin to me, and I understand everything is interpretive, but especially the, the voice over Adore saying I never even have a plan for a song. You is out there like I said, Manic Pixie Dream Girl it up all over the stage. You all harsh. Your movements is harsh. You jumping all around. You mad. You angry. Which the song is angry. However, the song is taking you to church. Especially when it hit the part freedom. And Jocelyn Fox nailed that shit. Like, when somebody is lip syncing to Aretha Franklin, that's what I'm expecting to see. I'm expecting you to go to church. She was going to church. She was going to church. But y'all sent Jocelyn home. Overall, and this is, I think I said this last week too. How much do the runway really fucking weigh in? Because this was the entire challenge was the runway this time. Adore, I can't even say failed because failed is an F. Adore would have got like a U. Unsatisfactory and all the way down the motherfucker alphabet. Jocelyn, we got a D minus. But Adore, when you talk about an epic fail, that was an epic fucking fail. And then, okay, save yourself by lip syncing, and you're not even lip syncing the song right. She was hitting the words. She was entertaining to watch. I'm not going to say it was a bad lip sync. I just feel like Jocelyn embodied, excuse me, Jocelyn embodied the energy of the song much better. But of course, let's save the door again. I can't. Um, I'll see y'all next week for RuPaul's Drag Race Revealed and whatever else is coming up this week, you know. I drop I drop videos like I change my panties some, some weeks, so ain't, ain't no telling. But I want to thank you all for watching. As always, my pink ladies, my T-Birds. If you are just happen to be watcher of my shit, you can be included in the pink lady T-Bird tagline by clicking that subscribe. It looks like me dressed in a Sailor Moon outfit, but much thinner. And um, I want to thank you all for joining me. If you do not follow me on Twitter, please do. Contests are coming up. Twitter will be involved. So please follow me at Jimmy Pink. Same way it's spelled here. Jimmy with the I. Pink with the Y. And... So that do us part. This is